All right, it's another fine day uh, and time for our daily devotions. It is July 4th, and we are looking only at two Psalms today, Psalm 106 and 107. 106 is the last Psalm of Book 4 of the Psalms, and Psalm 107 begins the fifth and last book of the Book of Psalms. So let's start with 106. This is a historical psalm. If Psalm 104 is kind of the mirror or twin of 103, then Psalm 106 is the mirror or twin of Psalm 105 that we looked at yesterday. Psalm 105 focuses on Israel's uh, uh, sojourn in the wilderness and in, in Egypt, its exodus from Egypt. Uh, Psalm 106 briefly states the story of the Exodus, but, but goes into far greater depth in recounting the events of Sinai and the wilderness years uh, and the first generations in the land. So it, it sort of continues the story from Psalm 105. Uh, Psalm 105 e emphasizes the people's history as the story of God's faithfulness. Psalm 106 uh, narrates the history uh, of people who continually need to repent of their sin. Uh, so the focus in Psalm 105 is on God's great deeds. This focus on, in Psalm 106 uh, is of the people's misdeeds, if you will. Psalm 105 is a hymn of praise. Uh, Psalm 106 does begin and ends with praise. Uh, but the body of the psalm is really a prayer for forgiveness and rescue. Uh, as a prayer for forgiveness, the psalmist uh, multiplies various expressions for sin. And the language, noticing the language is important. We have sinned, committed iniquity, did not remember, rebelled, forgot, put God to test, had no faith, did not obey. Uh, so clearly, this uh, imagery, these words uh, give to us in poetic fashion the depth of the people's sin against God. As the, uh, the psalm moves forward uh, uh, through the story of Israel's history, the perversity of the people's sins increase. And that's actually what we saw, saw in the historical narratives, didn't we? First and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, that as time went on, the sins multiplied. The sins of the people and the sins of the king multiplied until there was a time when there was no going back. Uh, the full measure of iniquity had been uh, filled and the people were going to go off into exile. Uh, so, you know, to, to, to sort of catch the language here of the, of, of the increase of sin, you start with uh, phrases like in verse seven, where the psalmist says, the people did not remember the abundance of your steadfast love. But we get toward the end of the psalm and we read that the people provoked God to anger with their deeds. So it's getting more intense. And finally, we get right near the end of the psalm that they sacrificed their sons and daughters and poured out innocent blood. There are, there's nothing uh, you can really do worse in by the Old Testament law than sacrifice your children to a false deity. Uh, so the, the psalm comes dramatically to a climax um, with, with the announcement of, of, a, of a surprise. And that is that even though the people are being sinners and doing what they're doing, God has remembered his covenant nevertheless and showed his compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. And therein ends the psalm. Now, the last verse, as we have seen before, at the end of every major book of the psalms, the last verse of the last psalm, as the book ends, is not from the psalm per se, but it's added at the end as a closing doxology. So verse, uh, Psalm 106, verse 48, serves to close out book four of the Psalms. And now in Psalm 107, we begin book five. Uh, here we have um, a Psalm that is a poem of thanksgiving. It calls for praise in response to the Lord's acts of steadfast love on behalf of many people. 
Uh, you get this opening call to praise in verses one through three, and then you get uh, four parallel stanzas. And uh, the introductory call to praise exhorts those whom the Lord has redeemed from notice the east, west, north, and south to thank God. Another way, another, another way to say it is God's people from all directions, from everywhere, praise God. Uh, you get uh, descriptions of the, some of those who suffered some kind of peril or crisis, and, uh, but they cried to the Lord in their trouble. He delivered them from their distress. And at the end of each stanza, each of the four stanzas after the trouble is had and the people call out, uh, you end with, let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love. And so this is presented as a pattern for the life of faith. Uh, we uh, find ourselves in trouble. We call out to the Lord and the Lord attends to our needs. Um, and so the Lord intervenes at times to move people from lamentation uh, in the midst of a crisis to praise for their deliverance. And when we praise God, uh, we are placing our own lives into this, this overarching story of God's salvation. And when we sing, we are singing ourselves into God's story. An interesting thought that we should ponder more at some point. Um, you get the final stanza of, uh, of the Psalm, verses 33 through 38. Uh, praises God for providing for the hungry and for the thirsty, and also in 39 through 43 of overturning the oppressive orders of society on behalf of the lowly and the oppressed, on behalf of those who have no power and those who have no influence. That is Psalm 107. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you again for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. In spite of our misdeeds at times and our faithlessness, you continue to remain with us. Help us in this day to live as people in praise of you, knowing that your presence sustains us and guides us in this day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Have a great day.